Welcome to another treatment of our the International Sunday School lesson. Today's lesson is entitled, Praise God for His Greatness. And it's for October the 31st, 2021, fall quarter, lesson number 9. And it's taken from Psalm 149, verse 1 through 5, and the 150th Psalm. Now, a little background information. The 149th Psalm was most likely composed soon after the return from the captivity of Babylon. So that's the time frame that it was written in. Also, too, I want to make mention of the fact that these two psalms uh, talk a lot about the place of music in the worship. And let me just tell you a quote from Martin Luther, who said, Whoever despises music... I'm displeased with him. Next to theology, I give a place to music, for thereby all anger is forgotten, the devil is driven away, melancholy, many tribulations, and evil thoughts are expelled. It is the solace of a desponding mind. And I have found that to be true uh, throughout the entire course of my life. Um... Uh, I have really derived a lot of of comfort, and it has been a high part of my worship of God has been music. And I encourage everybody, no matter what their skill level is, to uh, enjoy music, to participate in the music of the church, uh, to use it in their worship, uh, sing through the day, uh, sing praises to the Lord, listen to good Christian music. Uh, let it be an active part of your worship and your day-to-day -day activities, okay? Psalm 149 and 1. Praise the Lord, sing to the Lord a new song. His praise in the assembly of His faithful people. Now, there are a couple of ways to understand this, and I think both of them are valid. One way is, just like the phrase that we use often, well, he's singing a new tune. In other words, uh, there's been a change of heart. Uh, he's not going about the same, going about life in the same way that he was before. And I think that is also a way that this is uh, uh, meant in this phrase, sing a new song. There's also another way it's interpreted, which is the more direct way, is that uh, there was an act of creating a new piece of music, which I think also is a very valid uh, way of worship and one that I've uh, enjoyed many times, um, creating new pieces of music. And I think that we should uh, actively be creating new pieces of music. Uh, I've been a member of the Christian Fellowship of Art Music Composers for, I guess, probably the last 20, over 20 years. Uh, I had the privilege of serving on their board of directors uh, for the first term that uh, uh, when the organization first was formed. And it's a very important part of uh, the Christian church and the Christian mission uh, for new pieces of music to be uh, written. Uh, also, too, I'm, you know, I, I think it's really great that they still are doing the uh, convention-style hymnals where people are writing a uh, good, good choral shape note and these new songs are being compiled and being uh, put in books and being sent out and people are learning uh, new songs because that is a very legitimate um, form of worship and a way for people to contemplate uh, the things of God. 
Now, some other verses uh, that talk about singing a new song, uh, Psalm 33 and 3, sing to him a new song, play skillfully, and shout for joy. Isaiah 42 and 10, sing to the Lord a new song, his praise from the ends of the earth. You who go down to the sea and all that is in it, you islands and all who live in them. Uh, we see in Revelations talking about the uh, end of the end of time, the end of days in Revelation 5 and 9, and they sang a new song saying, you are worthy to take the scroll and to open its seal seals because you were slain and with your blood you purchased for God persons from every tribe and language and people and nation. So we see how that this creating a new song and singing this new song and singing a new song is a very legitimate form of worship. Okay? Psalm 149, 2 and 3. Let Israel rejoice in their maker. Let the people of Zion be glad in their king. Let them praise his name with dancing and make music to him with timbrel and harp. And so here we see how that the psalmist is talking about people praising God in various manners, uh, one in dance uh, with various instruments with both the timbrel or the tambourine and the harp. So you have a very percussive uh, form of, of music, and you also have a very um, a contemplative musical instrument in the harp. And both of them, that whole entire range of music is a way for people to uh, be contemplating and to uh, give worship to God. We should be uh, very active in our way of worshiping the Lord. Okay? Psalm 149, 4 and 5. For the Lord takes delight in his people. He crowns the humble with victory. Let his faithful people rejoice in this honor and sing for joy in their beds. Now, the Lord delights in us. He delights in his people. And those of us who are grandparents know exactly this kind of feeling because it's the way that we look at our grandchildren. And the Lord looks out after us and is so... Uh, enjoys us when we're doing right. Zephaniah 3 and 17, The Lord your God is with you, the mighty warrior who saves you. He will take great delight in you, his love. He will no longer rebuke you, but will rejoice over you with singing. Proverbs 11 and 20, the Lord detests those whose hearts are perverse, but he delights in those whose ways are blameless. Proverbs 15 and 8, the Lord detests the sacrifice of the wicked, but the prayer of the upright pleases him. So it's important for us to really uh, grasp this concept, how that the Lord delights in us when we are doing right. And he enjoys seeing us do right. Okay? Psalm 150, verse 1 and 2. Praise the Lord. Praise God in his sanctuary. Praise him in his mighty heavens. Praise him for his acts of power. Praise him for his surpassing greatness. And we see here how the psalmist is saying that in 
every activity to be praising God as we go through our day-to-day lives. You know, the Revelations 15, 3 and 4 says, And sang the song of God's servant Moses and the Lamb. Great and marvelous are your deeds, Lord God Almighty. Just and true are your ways, King of the nations. Who will not fear you, Lord, and bring glory to your name? For you alone are holy. All nations will come and worship before you, for your righteous acts have been revealed. We need to praise God in everything that we do. And at every opportunity, we need to be praising God. In every opportunity, in every way, praise the Lord. Psalm 150, verse 3 and 5, through 5. Praise Him with the sounding of the trumpet. Praise Him with the harp and lyre. Praise Him with timbrel and dancing. Praise Him with the strings and pipe. Praise Him with the clash of cymbals. Praise Him with resounding symbols. And we see here how that the psalmist is listing all the various ways and the various instruments to praise the Lord with. We should, in every way we possibly can, we need to use whatever instruments are at our disposal whatever instruments that we like to hear played, we should be using those to praise the Lord. And I am a firm believer that whatever culturally, the kind of music that you like, that you enjoy, and the instruments that you like and enjoy, they should be used in the sanctuary in the house of God to praise the Lord. If you like bluegrass and you like banjo music, then the church music uh, that you should be producing should sound like bluegrass and have a banjo in it. If you like rock and roll and that's the kind of music that you like, your church music needs to sound more like rock and roll. If you like southern gospel, and that's the kind of music that you like, the music in your church to sound southern gospel. If you like pop music, and that's the kind of music that you like, the music needs to sound like pop music. If you like jazz, the music in your church to sound like jazz. The expression of the praise, the actual style does not matter. The thing that does matter is the the fact that you're praising the Lord and also, too, the fact that it's participatory. See, the house of God, when people, when the music's done in the house of God, people should be participating in that producing that music. And everyone should have a chance to participate in that music inside the house of God. This should not be a performance that you're sitting there just uh, listening to it and watching it without not having any kind of... uh, lifting up your voice. You should be participating in this act of worship. You know, the Bible talks about how that we should sing to yourselves in psalms and hymns in spiritual songs. It is everyone should be participating in producing that music. But the style of the music really doesn't matter to God. Uh, there's no a righteous style of music and unrighteous style of music. Now, there's uh, ungodly words and godly words. It's the words that matter, okay? Psalm 150 and 6. Let everything that has breath praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Now, it's important for us to realize that This particular verse is talking about 
everything, all of creation praising the Lord. And that is really something that is said in other places in the scripture, how that the entire creation sings forth the praise of God. Psalm 145, 10 and 11, all your works praise you, Lord. Your faithful people extol you. They tell of the glory of your kingdom and speak of your might. When you hear the birds singing outside in the morning, and they are singing, they are singing praises to the Lord God Almighty. When you hear the the waves crash upon the seashore, that those waves are praising, the clap of those waves are praising God Almighty. Okay? Now, in conclusion, I just want to encourage everyone to participate in praising the Lord and the music at their church. And for all the churches and anybody who's involved in the churches that are under the sound of my voice, that you open up and allow people to participate. Uh, Don't take the music in your church to be a performance to where you have the superstars up at front uh, performing and everybody else just listening and uh to the to the music try to make everything to where people are participating in the worship and the praise of the lord using music okay well friends good lord willing i'll be back with you next weekend